match ready because <laughs> we're going to be going there soon. Lucas, Lucas Kiefer and William Hawk. You see the records here. 10 and 2, 11 with Burn. Now, Burn is our most played deck here in day number two. 12 copies of the 107 players in the day number two. So to see a matchup like this at the top of the standings, I suppose not that surprising. No, I mean, there are a lot of them. It's a goblin guide. We'll see what land Kiefer wants to search for. Well, if he knows it's the mirror, Basic Mountain might be a smart choice. Yeah, I think he's going to go with Basic Mountain, and he will. So how many turns total do you think the match is going to be? Ooh, great question. 15. Okay. I, I definitely would have taken the over on 12. Okay. That means I set a good line. Yeah. You're taking the over under on 15. Uh, let's go over. Well, okay. I mean, you better decide right now. I'll go, I'm not letting I'll you go win. over. All no, right. let me wait a few turns. See <laughs> yeah. how this game's yeah. going. Here comes Goblin Guy. What if Foothills is the reveal? Both players now know that they are in a burn mirror. So let's make it quick, boys. Got to get them dead as fast as you can. No waiting around. Then draw here for Kiefer. Now, there's a wooded Foothills. Rift Bolt on top this time. Goblin Guy not going to continue giving other players lands. Mm, but now here is a real trump card because now William's got to get this killed. Yeah, right and, and he's going to take two in the process. Yeah. And but, that's even if he has something. I mean, a lot of these burn spells don't even target creatures necessarily. So there's Eidolon the Great Revel, a card that really helped put this card on the map. So back to William Hawk, we're going to go. Rift Bolt was the draw. That was the reveal of Goblin Guide. Here comes Goblin Guide. Take a look. Scalding Tarn. Goblin Guide being very friendly here for Lucas Kiefer. No blocks. Not much of a surprise there. Sacred Founder going to come down, going to tie things up. 14 all. Follow up? Lightning Helix. Okay. One of the most important cards in the mirror. Yes, and Lucas does not have any copies in his main deck. William has two. Not really a card that I think you can play a lot of copies of in Modern. It's weird to say that two damage, deal three, game three is not particularly efficient, given the burn spells that are available. Yeah, it is one of the most inefficient cards, oddly enough. But fantastic in the mirror. So if you're expecting a lot of burn, and we've got 12 copies in day number two, and you have to imagine there were more in day one, might be a good time to play some main deck copies like William Hawk is. Yeah, and in this instance... All it really managed to do is break even because of the Eidolon. Yeah. Scalding Turner's land number three here for Lucas Kiefer. Now there's a lightning bolt. He's going to sacrifice a Scalding Turner very quickly. It's another Eidolon. Yep. And it is. I like getting the Goblin Guide off the board first. Now you're the one with two permanents and the Eidolon. Uh, and also casting the lightning bolt before you play the Eidolon, so you don't take two damage yourself. Though he does have to take two off of the stomping ground. It's worth it. Yeah. Only two basic mountains in Lucas Kiefer's list. And two basic mountains in William Hawk's list. Both players do have the splash here, green and white. Sometimes you do see splashes for black, for bump in the night, and things of that nature. Yeah, this is by far the most popular version. Boros Charm and Atarkas Commander, just so powerful. Yeah. Land number three here for Hawk is an Arid Mesa, so he'll sacrifice that. Let's see what Land Hawk wants to search for. Is he going to go for the basic mountain? He's going to. And now, there's a Grim Lava Mancer. Trigger Eidolon right away. I can be able to get that one by Lucas. A couple of Rift Bolts are on suspend. Those won't trigger the Eidolon just yet. Kiefer will untap. Time to draw. See the life totals here. 11 to 10 in favor of Lucas right now. Remember, Goblin Guide has dished out quite a few lands there for Lucas Kiefer. He'll be attacking. Goblin Guide trigger. Goblin Guide on top for William Hawk. He'll turn that face down. Doesn't get to draw that one. He'll be taking four, falling to six. Does Kiefer have a winning line of burn spells to cast here? 
Lava spike in hand. So on, on William's upkeep, he's probably going to be able to Grim Lava Mancer down the Eidolon and then resolve those Rip Bolts. Mm -hmm. So if Lucas doesn't actually have a way to finish the game this turn, he might actually be the one in trouble despite being off to a very good start. So risky Lava Spike to cast. He's going to go down to nine. Now Hawk's going to fall a little bit lower. He's going to fall down to three. And now he's going to fall down to seven from playing Grim Lava Mancer. So he could just die right now. Well, he does know the top card of William's deck is a Goblin Guide. Yep. So Eidolon's suspend triggers on the stack. Got to activate Grim Lava Mancer to take care of the Eidolon, just like you mentioned. Now these Rift Bolts are going to come off of suspend. No Eidolon there to trigger. I think you might see some Burn Spells just go upstairs, yeah. Kiefer's going to fall down to one. Now you mentioned there's a Goblin Guide on top of the deck. Does Hawk have a Burn Spell? Yes, he does. It's a Skull Crack. William Hawk is going to win this game here over Lucas Kiefer. The Burn Mirror goes to the player on the right for right now, as Hawk is currently up a game, and both players are going to go to the sideboards. Yeah, that, that's surprising. After the first three turns, I did not think that William was in a good position to win that game. Neither did I. I think, I, I think the issue there is just playing the, the Lava Spike and the Grim Lava Mancer in that instance. Perhaps Lucas is supposed to hold back a little bit. Well, if he held one of them, he still dies. Um, but I think he did want to play the Lava Mancer because he was still short of lethal on the next turn. But Okay. Well, we'll take a look at the sideboards here for both players. I imagine they're going to be somewhat similar. We'll start with Lucas Kiefer and his two core firewalkers, two rending volleys, a lightning helix, two skull cracks, two path exiles, four destructive revelries, and then two deflecting palms. Some interesting cards here for the mirror. Yeah, so I definitely like core firewalker. That's kind of the obvious one. Lightning helix also likely here for the mirror. And then path to exile, maybe if you expect your opponent to have their own core firewalkers, that's one of the only cards that can actually get rid of it. Your thoughts on deflecting and, palm. And, and palm is, I believe it's there more for like, the Amulet Bloom deck trying to hit you for eight damage with the Primeval Titan, but I think it's reasonable here. It, it might be kind of tough sometimes to keep open the two extra mana, but I do think it'll come in. Other side of things here for William Hawk, two Rending Volleys, three Path Exiles, two Relic Progenitus, two Deflecting Palm, three Core Firewalker, three Destructive Revelry, so probably the same path. Really. Yeah, very similar. Uh, looks like William has a few extra cards to bring in here, plus he has the Lightning Helix's main deck. So I'm not sure, like Lucas saw a Lightning Helix, so maybe he wants to bring in the additional Skull Cracks as well. Um, so here's a question. You talk about Path to Exile. Are, are you just kind of expecting your opponent to have core firewalkers on their side? Like, do you have to bring in Path to Exile just assuming that they have core firewalkers? You're kind of playing a little weird game of cat and mouse here. Yeah, it's tough because if you have a path in your hand and your opponent doesn't draw a core firewalker, or even if they do have a core firewalker, but they are playing a turn one goblin guide, like, do you really want to burn the path on that goblin guide right away? Because giving your burn mirror opponent an extra land is definitely going to put you on the back foot. So I think it is a card that you probably have to bring in just because if you don't have an answer to core Firewalker, you just lose the game on the spot. All right, well, there are your options there for both players. Game number two gonna be underway here in just a moment as they do shuffle up. So we're gonna talk about Patrick Chapin. He is the innovator. He is the Hall of Famer, two-time world's runner-up and a Pro Tour champion. And he finds time to write books like Next Level Magic and Next Level Deck Building. It's the Next Level Library here with Mr. Chapin. The books for all skill levels. Perhaps the Kiefer family has some of these in the home. Perhaps they're just going to be writing the books <laughs> in the next decade. Paperback and ebook, or whatever new technology there will be 10 years from now for them to write on. Could They'll be anything. Probably just be a chip in our brain. Just Maybe. We just tell it to upload it, and it'll read it for us, and then we'll have it. And the, those books, however, those chip in the brain is not available now. The books are available now. True. Paperback and ebook. StarCityGames.com slash next level for more information about the innovators. Two fantastic books, Next Level Magic and Next Level Deck Building. Now we get ready here for more burn-on-burn burn action, and that backup match will be ready soon. That's for sure. <laughs> so the game one was pretty interesting, and I think the, the most interesting thing about this mirror is what kind of role Eidolon of the Great Revel plays. Yeah. Because it seems like, oh, dealing yourself damage, that's not what you want to be doing in the burn mirror, but if you are the person that is able to get to an empty board where you have the Eidolon, that's certainly in your favor. So I know for... The standard burn decks that got pretty popular at Pro Tour Magic Origins. Uh, at first, people were either not starting their Eidolon of the Great Rebels or they were just boarding them out in the mono-red mirrors because they just assumed that they were bad. But like, if you actually playtest the matchups, 
uh, Eidolon was one of your best cards because it was pretty easy to get your opponent down to no board. Yep. And then you're able to play that, and it's going to cost your opponent two life to remove that. Now, I don't know if the modern Burn Mirror is as similar as that because, like I said, there's not a lot of burn spells that actually go after the creatures, but it is possible. Well, both players are going to take a look at their opening hands. Lucas Kiefer will be on the play, assuming that he chose the play. William Hawk currently up a game on the draw. Both players are going to keep. And we will be underway here in just a moment. Yeah, I mean, drawing first is also another real possibility. Yep. But I feel like this modern burn deck is much different than, like, the red deck wins of old. Arid Mesa, Mountain, Lava Spike. Let's do this. Just straight in your face. <laughs> Who knew during those times we were doing Kamigawa block drafting that Lava Spike would be a premier combo? Oh, man, I wrote on so many. <laughs> almost certainly threw a bunch away. I'm going to have to dig through the parents' house when I go back to Cleveland for Thanksgiving, see if I got any lying around. Last time I went, I found a couple dazes, so I'm basically rich. Yeah. Was there, like, a survival of the fittest involved at some point? Uh, I think so. I, I also found some white-bordered mana leaks. But I just threw those away because those are unacceptable. Yeah, that's yeah. that's not that exciting. Eighth edition mana leaks, that's not okay. So Josh Cho, good friend of mine, uh, went back to visit his parents in Korea and was like, I'm pretty sure I have some cards here. I'm going to go <laughs> hunting for them. That was like his big deal. You know, obviously he wants to visit the family and stuff, but he's like... We know what the trip's about. He's like, I'm really looking for some wastelands. Yeah. <laughs> Goblin guy could have come across here for two. I love the great revels the reveal. You saw William Hawk actively search out the Sacred Mesa off the fetch land there, so dealt himself quite a few points of damage. Uh, it's all worth it if it means that you have white, white for Core Firewalker. Okay. Here's the Eidolon off of a Sacred Foundry. Now we're going to head back Hawk's way, 15, 14 in life totals. And there does appear to be a white card in hand, but it looks like it's a path to exile. I don't even know if Flamehawk has a second land over there. First things first, here comes Goblin Guy. Take a look at the top card. Speaking of Core Firewalker. <laughs> well, now William knows to save his path to exile. Yeah. He has a target for that. And he'll just pass the turn back. Interesting. Kiefer will draw. The Core Firewalker is what he's picked up. He does have a fetch land in hand to be able to search that other white mana if he wants to try to deploy that right now. He'll sacrifice the Bloodstained Mire. There is that second white mana. Though, to note, again, he's dealing himself quite a bit of damage here to play a core Firewalker. He's out, he even has to take two from his own Eidolon. He'll go with a Lightning Bolt with Firewalker on the stack. Two damage to be dealt from the Eidolon trigger. Eidolon down. Okay, I like doing this over path first. Makes it so you don't take two off the attack from the Eidolon. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess you probably want a path to exile on your turn to clear the way for the Goblin Guide. There is a path. <laughs> Lucas was ready with the uh, I gain a life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was ready. Yep. Okay. It's like, oh, white card, man. Yeah. So Firewalker down, Eidolon down. Goblin Guide can be coming in the red zone here in just a moment. Kiefer's going to fall down to six. Top card is Deflecting Palm. All right. The sideboard cards are showing up. Yeah, that's a good one to know about, too. Don't really want to be throwing burn spells around willy-nilly when that's a card. Deflecting palm the draw. There's a wooded foothills. Boros charm in hand here for Lucas Kiefer. Another Eidolon and a deflecting palm. A weird mash of cards there. Yeah, so you see these burn spells and pseudo burn spells and deflecting palm, they don't deal with that goblin guide. So do you want to play Eidolon of the Great Revel, hopefully as a blocker? I might have some interest in trading, but right. it's, it's tough. Now, you know that William Hawks can draw land eventually, and he just did. He drew another copy of Sacred Foundry. Yeah, now if you're in William's spot, you might just be like, okay, I'm not going to attack. Eidolon's fine. You know, you're at six. If yep. you want to start playing stuff, go right ahead. I might have some responses. Yeah, and if you want to attack with that I want, by all means. He's going to come to the red zone with Goblin Guy. Take a look at the top card. It's a Bloodstained Mire. That'll be added to Kiefer's hand. Will there be a trade is the question. It looks like there will be. So I on a Goblin Guy. We'll trade. I am curious to see if Hawk wants to play this land untapped. He will, so he's going to fall down to 10. Remember, Lucas Kiefer does have Deflecting Palm in hand, and William Hawk knows that. 
Rift Bolt on suspend. Pass the turn back. Maybe it's time for a little Borlas Charm. I think you might as well. I mean, Lucas has five total mana. He may or may not be interested in cracking that fetch land, but Boros Charm doesn't have a whole lot of utility at this point. I think you just take the time to cast it when you can. It's six all. Though Hawk is not done with his turn just yet. He's going to go down to five. Let's make it two. Via Lightning Bolt. Gonna get him. Oh, hmm. <laughs> okay. Fancy. I can appreciate it. This is the first expedition we've had on camera, by the way. Ever? Yep. That's number one. Okay. I've been waiting to see if we'd ever have one, because I didn't know people would actually sleep them up and play them. I own one of those Sacred Foundries. Yeah? Maybe I should help Lucas complete his place set. You know, I didn't bring it with me, unfortunately. But Bloodstained Mire. Now, Boros Charm was the draw. Rift Bolt's going to come off Suspend, so you are going to predictably have a Deflecting Palm here. I think in response, William Hawk's going to have a Burn Spell. And if there is a Burn Spell in response... Skull Crack. Yep. Unless there's another deflecting palm here, and there is not. William Hawk is going to win this match here over Lucas Kiefer. Two games to zero. The burn mirror goes to William Hawk. And with that W, he moves on to 12 and 1. And I believe he is our first lock here for the top eight. Yeah, impressive stuff. I mean, both games, it looked like he was pretty far behind. Missing some land drops along the way, but some timely burn spells will get the job done. So we do get ready here for another backup match. We were going to move to an affinity versus... Oh my, Philip Reeves. The tooth and nail. Yeah, our tooth and nail player is making a bit of a deep run here, but uh, that match ended. Uh, that actually doesn't mean anything because I was going to say if the match ended pretty quickly, that means that Affinity won, but that's not technically true. No, I mean, I think Affinity would be a favorite.